This is the first video in a series of videos for Excel Unit B, which is entitled Working with Formulas and Functions. Because using your knowledge of Excel basics, you can expand your worksheets to include more complex formulas and functions. To work more efficiently, you can copy and move existing formulas into other cells instead of manually retyping the same information. When you copy or move uh, that information, you can also control how the cell references are handled so that your formulas will always reference the intended cells. Our objectives for this unit is going to be, first of all, to create a complex formula. Then we're going to be able to insert and type functions. We're going to copy and move cell entries. Then we're going to understand relative and absolute cell references as well as copying formulas with relative and absolute cell references. And then finally, we're going to round a value with a function. Now this video, uh, video one, is going to be over the information that's on page Excel 26, which is entitled Creating a Complex Formula. And a complex formula is one that uses more than one arithmetic operator. You might, for example, need to create a formula that uses addition and multiplication. You can use arithmetic operators to separate tasks with a complex equation. In formulas containing more than one arithmetic operator, Excel is going to use the standard order of precedence rules to determine which operation to perform first. You can change the order of precedence in a formula by using parentheses around the part you want to calculate first. For example, and if we take a look here, and I'm just going to go to a blank area of my uh, spreadsheet here, and if we would use the formula equals 4 plus 2 times 5. Now we know by the order of operation uh, on there that uh, I always use the old saying of please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We know that parentheses come first followed by any exponents and then after that we have our multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So we know that that's the way that Excel is going to be looking at these different tasks and everything on there. It's going to be looking at what to do first. Now in this example we know that multiplication is going to occur before addition. So if we hit enter on this we notice that we get come up with a response of 14. However if I copy this information and paste it in the cell below and then use parentheses around the addition part, this is changing the order of operations so that parentheses will occur first. So whatever's inside the parentheses, which is 4 plus 2, is going to happen first. And if I hit enter here, you see that now I have a response of 30. So using the same numbers and the same operators, I get two different answers according to how you can complete up your equation or your formula. So that's why you need to really plan out your formulas before typing them into Excel and make sure you know exactly what you want before you get there. So now let's first of all take a look at uh, step one and step one wants you to go to Core Sites and it's wanting you to open up the EXB1 file uh, from the walkthrough assignment uh, on there and then next what you're going to do is after you open that up you're going to go and do a save as and we're going to save this into either your My Documents or your Home Directory. And we're going to, to there. We're going to save this as Tour Revenue Analysis. And now that we notice that the title has been changed on there. Next, what we're going to do is is that we're going to take a look at Step Two. And Step Two tells us that we're going to click on Cell B14. Now, with the total that we have on here, it tells us that it's a 20% rise. And that's what we're going to find, is a 20% increase in total tour revenue. So to do this, after we click on cell B14, we need to use our formula prefix, which is an equal sign. Then we're going to use the cell reference for B12, because we're looking at this total right here. Remember, it's important to use the cell references. That way, so if any of these other numbers change up here, this will automatically recalculate. Now this, and then after that, we're going to hit our plus sign. So we're taking this number plus another set of numbers. Now this is the first part of the formula, uh, that you are creating references 
for that total on there. And that way so that we are taking whatever is in this cell plus another set of numbers. And which if we look at step three, it tells us how to finish this formula. To finish it, we're going to click back on B12 again. So we're taking this number plus this number. However, we're going to multiply that by 0.2, which is the same thing as 20%. So we're taking this number plus 20% of this number. And that's the second part formula, which is adding that 20% increase to the original value of the cell. Now make sure that your formula looks very similar to this. And if it does, you can go ahead and hit your enter button. And your enter button will take the formula, which is still up here in the formula bar, but it shows you your result in your spreadsheet cell. And it should be 386122.344. And that is the result that you should have. Now we're going to add in and show you another way to do this, is, uh, or another one on there. If we press our tab key, we're going to move over to cell C15. Or, excuse me, C14. And when we're in C14, we're going to hit our equal key. We're going to click on cell C12. We're going to hit our addition sign, so we're going to add C12 times 0.2 and we click our enter button this time we should come up with a response of 410969.712 and so this is showing you that this way that you can copy the formulas on there or you can have the same formulas however there is an easier way to do this and we will show you that on here and to do this what we're going to do is it tells us that on step 6 Step 6 tells us that we're going to drag our plus sign pointer, which is our mouse pointer, from cell C14, and we're going to drag this over to E14. So we're selecting these three cells right here. And we do that, we are now going to go up to the editing group, click on our fill button, and we're going to fit to the right. Now the reason that we're choosing to the fill to the right is that if you notice that our formula is here at the left. And of course, remember that these buttons, wherever that little blue mark is, that's where your formula is at. So we're going to fill the information from the left to the right. And when we do that, we see that now the formula has been updated for each of those different cells. Now that's why it's important also to use the cell references, because when you're copying those formulas or filling those formulas across there, uh, it will automatically update the information in there. Because notice that when we typed in our formula here for C14, use C12 as the reference, but when we copied it over to the next one, notice it moved to D12. And when we copy to the next one on there, it used the reference of E12. And so that is a whole lot easier than typing that formula out multiple times. And typically, all you'd have to do it is just once, and then fill the information in for the other cells that require that formula. Now the next thing that you want to do is just go ahead and save your work. Now, of course, when you work with formulas that contain more than one operation or operator, the order of precedence is very important because it affects the final value. Just like we've seen a little bit earlier, you might think the formula 4 plus 2 times 5 equals 30, but because the order of precedence dictates that multiplication is performed before addition, the actual result was 14. If a formula contains two or more operations, maybe such as 4 plus 0.55 divided by 4,000 times 25, Excel performs the calculations in a particular sequence based on the following rules. And the rules for Excel on here is that, first of all, operations inside parentheses are calculated before any other operations. Reference operations, such as ranges, are calculated first. Then, exponents are calculated next. After that, any multiplication and division. And then it progresses from left to right. And then finally, addition and subtraction are calculated from left to right as well. So when you have multiplication and division or addition and subtraction, whichever one occurs to the furthest left is going to be the one that's completed first on there. So it's going to first of all take a look at all the multiplication and division. The furthest left multiplication or division is going to be the one done first, then the one directly to the right of it, and then to the directly to the right of it. 
and then it takes a look at addition and subtraction. Once again, looks at the far left, takes the first uh, far left multi or, uh, subtraction or addition, calculates it, and then proceeds on that way. So it says in the example of 4 plus 0.55 divided by 4,000 times 25, Excel is going to perform the arithmetic operation by first dividing 4,000 into 0.55 then multiplying the result by 25, and finally adding 4. You can change the order of calculations by using parentheses, which as we've seen a little bit earlier. Now that concludes the information for creating a complex formula. In video 2, we're going to be talking about inserting in functions. So make sure that you do save your work and you're ready to move on to the next video.